Hey, welcome to Cow Free Kicks. On this channel, I review leather free sneakers only, and today it's all about the Nike Ispa Universal. Welcome to the channel. If you've not seen one of my reviews before, I always check out five different categories when I review a pair of sneakers, and they are looks, comfort, weight, breathability and price. And then at the end of the video, I will give these Nike Ispa Universals an overall rating out of five stars. If you do like what you'll see as you're going along and you wanna share a little bit of extra support, please take time to click the little thumbs up like button below on your device and you can also subscribe to the channel whilst you're looking down there as well. So let's start this review by first checking out these slightly odd looking shoes on feet. So if you're not aware of what the ISPA lab is at Nike, it's kind of an experimental division of their Oregon-based headquarters where they try and create a more futuristic shoe that falls more in line with their Move to Zero campaign where they want to become a zero waste company eventually. And this shoe definitely fulfills some of those areas with their Move to Zero campaign. But looks wise, I just don't, I don't feel it. It's not for me. I just had these on feet and I really don't think they look that great overall. I appreciate that a lot of design has gone into this. There's a lot of elements from different sneakers apparently like the 270s that they've taken and molded into this bio EVA foam design. And each pair is hand buffed. So you're gonna get a slightly different finish and look with every pair of sneakers that's released to be honest. I compared the two sneakers I got in this box and I could not tell the difference at all between the hand buffing of each of them, but they've said that each shoe should be individual. I just don't think it looks that great on feet, unfortunately, especially from the top down view where I think it almost looks like a, a Halloween Jason mask on your feet. I don't know why, I'm just it just shot into my head that image and that's what I feel I'm looking at when I'm looking down on these. Now, Talk a little bit more about their makeup. Now they are a bio EVA foam. It's two parts, so this upper is actually molded onto the lower part. You can see the line where the two connect just running across the top of the midsole, but it is all in one really, bio EVA foam derived from sugarcane rather than petroleum based derivative alternatives. So that means you are saving a lot of the climate emissions that would be used in petroleum based manufacturing processes with this bio EVA sugarcane based foam. You also get in the shoes as well as in the box, a second pair of these cork based insoles. Now it's 40% cork for moisture absorption, but you also get this rubberized softer kind of gel foam that comes with them as well for extra comfort. So when the initial pair of insoles in your shoes wears out, you've got a second pair so you can extend the life of this shoe as you're wearing it, which is really a great initiative. And to be honest, something they should think about doing more in other pairs of shoes. Only available in this natural colorway at the moment, but I've seen a couple of other marble colorways come around. But for me, I just don't think this shoe, which Nike are calling it, but for me, it's more of a sandal because there's no lacing system. And with this huge cutaway across the toe and the slip in, slip out kind of put on, I just don't think these really fall into the shoe category. So with this sandal, overall, I just don't think you're getting a great look. Now there's a lot of perforations in this upper. You have got this split here. You've got the cork insole. You've got more perforations around the toe box. That's where the Nike branding is situated for this shoe on the toe box there. You can see that it's got quite a chunky EVA foam midsole. As you move towards the outsole, you can see there's more perforations in this outsole unit here that runs straight through to this cork insole. So they're gonna be really good if you wanna wear these in kind of water-based areas because the water's just gonna drain out. But if you wanna wear these as an everyday shoe, I just don't think it's gonna work. If it is raining, obviously you don't really wanna take these out with the amount of cutaways it's got in the rain. But if you happen to get caught out in them, just expect that water to come up. And because this cork soaks up moisture, they're gonna get very, very wet very quickly. Overall, I just don't think it works for me looks wise. Now let's talk more about their comfort where I wanna put them to the test on my back doorstep.
You can see from the step test that I did get some nice responsive bounce back from this EVA bio based foam midsole and outsole unit. But overall, I do not think they offer as much comfort at all as some other foam runners that are out there at the moment. Even like the EQT sandal that Adidas released last year, I think that offered much more comfort than this Nike bio-based EVA foam. Unfortunately for me, it felt a little bit flat and dead under feet when I was walking with these. I didn't really feel much responsive bounce back other than from the heel area of the shoe here. But here's the main issue for me with these shoes. It's the fit. Now, obviously, you're trying to design a shoe that's going to fit everybody. Now, my feet are perfect UK length size 10 and width wise, I've got slightly wider than average feet and I do have slightly higher arches than average as well. So I did find with this shoe that obviously you can't adjust the shape of the upper of this sneaker. I felt that my feet rubbed quite severely here just on top of the toes when the foam bent. And also I did not like the way that this sat on top of my foot at all. And I also felt that they slid too much around the heel here because it's very deep. There's like a really deep, really heavy setback there. Normally with sneakers, you get quite a lot of ankle padding, but here it's a really, really deep set kind of cave where your heel sits. I did not feel that it offered enough support for me when I was walking in these. Now width wise, they're great. They're really good width wise. You've got a really wide toe on these. You can see when I'm holding it up, they're a very wide shoe and length wise, they were perfect as well. But when I was walking in these, I don't think this foam is forgiving enough and offers enough stretch to make them comfortable as an everyday lifestyle wear. So overall comfort wise, I was pretty disappointed. Now I wanna move on to their weight where I wanna pop them on the scales. Coming in at 269 grams, this is the main benefit and plus point for these Nike ISPA Universals is the fact that they are incredibly lightweight. They feel very lightweight in hand and very lightweight on feet. So if you are gonna wear these as like a beach sandal or as a holiday shoe, I think you are gonna reap the benefits of their weight because they are incredibly lightweight. Now I wanna move on to their breathability where I'm gonna pump this upper full of smoke and see how much smoke escapes. Predictably, they offer great breathability. With this huge cutaway across the middle of your foot, these huge perforations towards the top of the toe box, and also running up this kind of false tongue that you get on this EVA upper, they're gonna offer really nice breathability. You can see the smoke escapes incredibly quickly and in large amounts. And if you hung on to the end of that breathability test, you could see that the smoke also escaped from these perforations on the outsole of the shoe. So again, if you are gonna wear these in any conditions where they're gonna be slightly wet or muddy, then expect that moisture to be absorbed up through those holes and into your foot and this cork insole. So just something to think about when you are gonna wear these. But overall, an incredibly breathable pair of sandals or shoes and that's to be expected. Now moving on to their price. They came in for me at 73 pounds, which is a very nice price point because I don't think you can really pay too much more for a pair of shoes that is as simplistic as this. Now, yes, I like the futuristic techniques they've used on this shoe, but overall it's incredibly simple. There's no lacing system. It's a slip on slip off shoe. So I don't think you can really charge too much more than 73 pounds, but beware. I saw some other retailers other than Nike, which I bought these from direct charging a hundred pounds for this pair of shoes. And I just do not think you need to be spending that much money on these at all. So if you are gonna buy these, definitely beware of the price from other retailers that are not Nike Direct. That's gonna move me on to my overall score for these. And I can't really give them any more than two stars. And they're, they're really held up solidly by the fact that they're incredibly breathable and they're incredibly lightweight. I think for me, I think the price even though they're priced at 73 pounds from Nike Direct, I just think for the way that they look, they don't work for me at all. And I do not think they offer as much comfort as I would like at all either. So overall, I think that price is possibly just a little bit too high, even though it does seem quite cheap these days, paying that much for what you're getting with the shoe, I just don't think is that fair. And I think if you're gonna have these priced, I think you should price them at the same as like an Adelette slide or a Nike slide and go with like a 50, 55 pound price point. So if you've like what you've seen today please do not forget to drop some comments below throw me a like if you've got time and subscribe and if you also want to follow me on instagram hopefully i'll see you again soon for another one thanks bye